fire front. It was one of the big fears being expressed by fire authorities yesterday, but in this case, the merger of the Lithgow and Mount Victoria fires is a deliberate strategy. The firefighters have been using backburning to coax the fires to join up early. What they were most afraid of yesterday is now what they say they've fire, done deliberately. Which has done most of the damage so far. The Blue Mountains bushfires have destroyed more than 200 homes since Thursday. A state of emergency remains in force across New South Wales. And the State Fire Commissioner has ordered one of the largest mobilisations in his organisation's history as the Weather Bureau warns that extreme winds and temperatures could produce horrific fire conditions tomorrow. Our coverage today begins with Martin Cudahy. While conditions have eased slightly this morning, several fires are still burning in the Blue Mountains. We continue with the backburning operation uh, and the property protection uh, works that have been going on uh, in behind uh, the communities of Barambing, uh, right up to Mount Irvine Road, uh, just to the west of, of Bilpin. Uh, crews are in there uh, working with the community uh, and um, those that uh, did not choose uh, to leave that early um, area earlier uh, are now um, will be encouraged to stay, uh, seek shelter uh, as fire approaches, but importantly, um, uh, work closely with the firefighters while we together seek to actively defend uh, all the all the homes uh, north of that north of that um, Bell's line of road area between Bilpin uh, and Barambing. The New South Wales Rural Fire Service Commissioner is Shane Fitzsimmons. He says firefighters have now allowed the Mount Victoria bushfire to join with another, the State Mine fire. The fire is connected uh, and has been connected uh, overnight. Uh, what is what is going on right now uh, is some very de detailed, uh, difficult operations uh, to draw together uh, the forward control lines uh, from Blackheath uh, up towards the Gross River uh, and from the Gross River then uh, back up towards uh, the Bell's line of road. Allowing the two fires to join is a mitigation strategy. It's not as hot today as the forecast for tomorrow. If that merger was to have happened tomorrow, Enough heat would be generated for the fires to create their own weather system with tornadoes and lightning strikes. Dr Owen Price is a senior research fellow at the Centre for Environmental Risk Management of Bushfires at the University of Wollongong. He says it's only a possibility, but what's commonly called a fire cloud could form. The fire generates so much heat and water vapour that it pushes um, a smoke plume high up into the sky and if you combine that with unstable atmosphere, uh, the plume can go so high that it punches through the troposphere, so the stable layer there, and essentially what happens is it turns into a, a thundercloud uh, with the same sort of uh, dynamics, which is including it, it, so it's generating its own weather. And what that does is then feed back, feeds back on the fire behavior itself, so the wind speeds can pick up and you get lightning, but you can even get tornadoes occurring, and this all just has the, the general effect of intensifying the fire behaviour, so it gets more, more intense, spreads quicker, and lots more spotting. It sounds like the perfect storm. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly, and um, that's exactly what happened in the, um, some of the 2009 Victorian fires, uh, the Canberra fires in 2003, and the, the latest one I, I know of is the, um, the Wombalong fire that happened in um, the Warren Bungles National Park earlier this year. The New South Wales Minister for Emergency Services is Mike Gallagher. This morning he likens the conditions in the Blue Mountains to a brooding demon. To deal with it, RFS officers have been doing a lot of backburning. Mr Gallagher says they have been taking calculated risks in an attempt to gain control. For local firefighters in those communities, are the ones who are driving this attack. Instead of waiting for the fire to simply come towards those communities, uh, the strategies being employed by the local uh, fire controllers up there, understanding the vulnerabilities of this fire, looking for those vulnerabilities and putting in place the high-risk measures to try to stop its spread. In a new development this morning, a storm cell has developed over the state's central west. The RFS Commissioner, Shane Fitzsimmons, provided this update. We've already um, experienced uh, associated with this storm cell a 70 kilometre hour gust of winds uh, and a little higher. Uh, that's about to come across towards the fire ground. That will present challenges in terms of uh, the weather systems, erratic weather systems uh, and erratic weather behaviour at the local level. That then translates to uh, very dangerous, uh, very difficult fire behaviour uh, and firefighting conditions. Uh, as you would expect, 
uh, we've issued warnings uh, to our firefighters in the field, uh, particularly those in the more uh, rugged, uh, inaccessible country, uh, to be ready for uh, the onset of that uh, weather uh, and to be planning uh, and, and adjacent to uh, safety and refuges. Uh, and in the event that we need to, uh, we'll also look at uh, extraction should that be necessary. We are tracking some lightning uh, with the storm cell. Uh, how much ultimately comes across the back end of the ranges, uh, we'll have to wait and see. A state of emergency is still in place for New South Wales, and while currently there are no bushfire warnings, forecast storm could change that this afternoon. Martin Cutter here reporting. Well, light rain fell this morning in the region of New South Wales where the bushfires have linked up, but it offered little relief for residents or firefighters, as Brendan Trembath reports. Geared up and ready to go, volunteer firefighters receive one last briefing on their role today. OK, so Southern Division, we're, we're staging at the moment. We're going on the highway down to the diner, that diner with the full black... Throttle. It's called Full Throttle Diner. So we're going to stage there and then we're going to deploy from there. So we're going to be doing back burning. So is everyone full of uh, drip torch fuel? Because we're going to be back burning. We're going to set up into three sectors there and work each sector as we go. So, so we'll see you all there. Any questions? Um, is the uh, brigade paying for the um, food at the diner? Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can have rump, but you can't <laughs> have tea, though. <laughs> 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 if you haven't got your food, Matt, we should go down to the uh, showground and yeah. come up. There's some here, yeah. too. So there's, there's food packs here. Uh, and water and everything else. Yeah. Yep. OK. Done. We'll all see right. you all for the diner. Yep. The briefing was conducted by John Lennon. Not the late great Beetle, but his namesake who heads the Chifley strike team. Mr Lennon's brigade is from Turindale, north of Bathurst. Uh, as you can see, we've had some light rain this morning. It's burning off now. Our main task for today is we're setting up for tomorrow, which is going to be a bad day with lots of, lots of wind. So we're going to be doing back burning and tying up the current lines and just trying to mop up and contain, set strong containment lines for tomorrow. How big is the operation? How many people involved? Uh, in my strike force team, we've got, I think, 12 or 13 teams at the moment, and we're heading out now, and we'll deploy from, from our sector. The light rain fell in the scorch bush on the northern fringes of Lithgow. Kylie Martin, whose home has a magnificent bush view, was thrilled to see a slight change in the weather. It's a lot better than what it has been over the last few days because we've sort of been on edge since the fire started and they've done a tremendous amount of back burning last night which was really good and they've done a fantastic job so you're very close to the bush as i can see yes yes <laughs> only about 10 minutes from the house so it's a beautiful outlook it certainly is but it's a bit black now so <laughs> yeah and what's happening with your life the kids are they still at school going back to school today since uh i think it was last wednesday so, yeah, I think he's happy about that. Relief for you too? Definitely, yes, I can get back to work, so that's good. And that's resident Carly Martin speaking there to Brendan Trembath near Lithgow. Well, one of the most shocking features of the fire emergency in New South Wales is that five children have now been arrested and charged with lighting some of the most dangerous fires. An 11-year-old and a 15-year-old are accused of starting the Heather Bray blaze, which ripped through Port Stephens. Forensic psychologists say that while it's normal for children to be interested in fire, parents need to be on guard for when that fascination turns to playing with fire. Lucy Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting how there were four or five consecutive bulletins on Sunday morning, all of which said that the fire investigators were investigating the possibility that the Springwood fire, which cooked 200 houses on Thursday last week, was ignited by the Royal Australian Army who were conducting an explosives instruction course in the bush west of Sydney on a total fire ban day. But anyway, for what it's worth, here's a photo my son sent to me a couple of weeks ago of his raft crew, or the raft course. Uh, rafting is a species of firefighting that freaks a few people out. They don't actually get on rafts and float downstream to the fire. Right, well, that's a bit of late breaking news. Just as the wind starts to pick up here, and we're looking at 35 degrees, that phone call was my son, ringing me up to let me know that he hasn't gone out yet, 
He's one of six fire crews as the rapid response unit and he's sitting at the Penrith Leagues Club and he's just been called to lunch. So, Daddy breathes a sigh of relief. For what it's worth, because that means that he's still got his tanker full of water and he's not playing this game, the remote area firefighting teams. Because he qualified for that winch insertion and winch extraction about three weeks ago. And once upon a time, I made a living with a helicopter for long enough that I know all the reasons why the most dangerous thing you can do with a helicopter is fly them with a load on a sling tied to the helicopter's winch. Because there are some times when you have to just drop the sling load. So it's a bit worrying when my son, who I was the one who read to him all the stories about aeroplanes and helicopters and assorted such stuff, has now become qualified to fly helicopters by lassoing them with a rope and swinging along underneath them. So yeah, I'm pretty happy that he's got a fire truck, pumps and a tank full of water with which to play with the bushfires. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. That's the midday update. 22nd of October. Regarding the Sydney megafires. They grow up quick, don't they? Ciao.